All right, so the M4 iPad Pro is the most powerful iPad you can buy right now. But what kind of video editing app can you pair with this crazy iPad to best take advantage of its power? So we're gonna look at three different apps today. We're gonna look at DaVinci Resolve for iPad. We're gonna look at Final Cut Pro for iPad. And we're gonna look at LumaFusion. All three of these are very powerful video editing apps, but they shine in their own way. So we're gonna talk about their user interface. We're gonna talk about some special features that each of these video editing apps have, their export power, pricing, and the workflows that they can do. First, we're gonna look at Final Cut Pro for iPad. And this is very iPad first, user-friendly interface, very Mac OS-like in a lot of ways. So if you're used to the Mac version of Final Cut Pro, you're gonna like using this one. And as you just saw, it now has a portrait and a landscape mode. And the interface is very much a touch first interface. So if we drag in a couple clips here and we cut some stuff out, it has a magnetic timeline. So everything's snapping together at all times, which I find very helpful for quick paced editing. Then they have this floating jog wheel where you can go frame by frame and that is really helpful. Honestly, this handles the touch first experience better than any of the other apps. So if you're looking to use your iPad like this without a keyboard when video editing, this is going to be the best experience as far as interface. The whole interface is very customizable. These windows pop in and pop out very fluidly super adjustable you can change the clip height if you want to see a lot more of them on screen you can shrink them really small or make them really huge if you need to see the waveforms clearer or you can expand them to have the audio separate then we have davinci resolve for ipad and wow is there a lot going on on the screen so many more buttons than final cut pro which is a good and a bad thing so by default you get the cut page and the color page. I have all of the other DaVinci Resolve pages turned on, but this is not a native thing. You have to go into the keyboard shortcuts and activate them for the first time. Then they start showing up. So that the media, edit, fusion, Fairlight, and deliver page are not technically on the iPad version, but you can get to them, which makes this app crazy powerful. I mean, you basically have like Logic Pro built in. You basically have like a motion or after effects built in. You have a whole page dedicated to file management and a very proper video editing page. But the user interface is not that optimized for a tablet. I mean, you certainly can use it. As you can see, I'm kind of struggling remembering everything it's just not quite as intuitive as final cut pro for the ipad you get this master timeline here that you can help scrub through you can add a couple more pieces of footage on top of that and it works it does the job and especially if you go to the edit page you can get some really powerful tools but Again, this whole thing is not really made for the iPad version, so without a keyboard and mouse, it's not gonna be the greatest experience here. But that's the thing, you can pair a Magic Keyboard, and now this really isn't that bad. You can zoom in here, you can trim, and the way I even got some of this stuff is doing Command Option K, and then searching through some of these keyboard shortcuts and basically finding a way to activate the pages here. So there's a lot you can do. You can set, obviously customize your shortcuts here, set things up to work pretty well on your iPad version here. But again, it feels very much like a Mac version ported over kind of poorly. I mean, if they really want this to be optimized for the iPad, they should take some time with these other pages and really make them work well. Now, they're not really advertised that these other pages work with the iPad, but in my opinion, it's an essential aspect to this even being good at all. If you don't utilize the other pages on DaVinci Resolve, then the only thing good about it, in my opinion, is the color page. This is by far the best color editor 
that we can have here. These color wheels are iconic for DaVinci Resolve. Hollywood uses this to edit their videos. And as far as I can tell, it is just like the version on the desktop. They haven't dumbed anything down here for you, which is fantastic. LumaFusion, I consider right in the middle between these two. It definitely is made for the iPad. I mean, this is not even a desktop app. It also has a portrait mode orientation that you could do this in. It's even on the iPhone. So yeah, it, it has more touch focused optimization. These handlebars are a bit more touch friendly. You can definitely make cuts a little bit easier. You can just tap into a clip and resize it and then go back. Still not as clean and easy for touch first as something like Final Cut for iPad, but it is an improvement over DaVinci Resolve. It's also a bit more resizable and customizable than DaVinci Resolve is. You can separate out audio, delete just the audio. I mean, it's got a lot of powerful tools. And again, it's kind of right in the middle here as far as UI. So I think if you're just starting out with your video editing, either Final Cut Pro or LumaFusion is gonna be the easiest to understand. I think LumaFusion is actually more complicated than Final Cut for iPad is. I think that's the most intuitive and DaVinci Resolve being the steepest learning curve. But because it has all those desktop pages hidden there, it is by far the most powerful. So as far as core features, the big thing with Final Cut Pro for iPad is gonna be your multicam support. So let's select these three and create a multicam synchronized by audio and drag that on the timeline. So this interface of just easily being able to go over them, tap between multicam angles is just unmatched in any of the other video editing apps you're going to see here. This can be done with a keyboard shortcut as well, but yeah, this is great. And it pairs great with their live multicam feature. I made a whole video on live multicam, so I'm not gonna go into that really much right now. But basically all you really need to know is if you shoot on iPhones and you wanna edit on an iPad, that is probably the most seamless way to do that. And I did use that for a while and it was a nice process. It's not perfect. The Final Cut camera app is honestly not as full featured as some other pro camera apps like the Blackmagic camera app that pairs well with DaVinci, but it usually does what you need it to. And it's great being able to see all those angles live on the iPad. You also get live drawing on the iPad. You can use your finger, but also the Apple Pencil, and that is an experience you don't get with anything else. You don't even get this on the Mac version of Final Cut Pro. This is exclusive to the iPad version, and what it will do is it will draw it on for you, which is neat, and you can even change the speed that it draws, so if you want it to be much slower, you can customize all that. But the key flaw with Final Cut Pro is it's a little too easy to use, a little too touch friendly, and a little too simplified to be a true professional video editing app. The reason I've started switching away from this as my main way to edit my videos is because I just am struggling to get everything I need out of Final Cut Pro for iPad. There's no third-party plugin support, so it's not like if Apple's lacking, someone else can pick up the slack. No, if Apple doesn't have it here, it's just not here. And really, a big area that lacks is anything to do with audio. I mean, the audio effects are really minimal, and you don't get a lot of customization over that. But you do get some nice tools like voice isolation, loudness, and noise removal, but you can't save any presets here. It leaves a lot to be desired. You just don't get as many options and not a good way to save your options. That's one of the biggest problems to me is the options here are fine, but if I can't even make presets, 
It means every single time I wanna color grade something, either I'm starting from scratch or I have to have that saved in some kind of note somewhere and then match the presets I was doing before. Like, it's a lot of work just to get started with a project. And when you're making videos as often as I am, that is not something you want to do. And for DaVinci Resolve, if you just download the app and launch it, it's not gonna look that feature packed. It's gonna have the cut page and it's going to have the color page. Now, color grading here is still the best. I mean, if you just tap auto, it can give you a pretty nice start or you can just tone down some of the things and you're already getting a really well color graded video. And I'm not by any means a professional color grader here. I'm just starting to get to the point of even trying to really color grade my videos that much. But this still has great tools for that. And the cut page is very usable. It's great for quick edits, but the only really thing close to a multicam editing is this sync tool where it will use audio to sync them all together. And basically you can keep dragging and dropping them in and they will be at their synced points, but you're still taking the new clip and putting it over top. And that's just, it's not as clean as a multi-cam clip that you're cutting between angles. It does have that in the edit page. So you can create a new multi-cam clip. And then if you're using a keyboard, you can cut between different angles and switch them. It should be allowing you to use a keyboard shortcut here, but I'm not even getting that to work. So you can use it that way to a degree as well. But as far as I know, you can't get the second viewer in the timeline here to actually see your angles while you're cutting it up. So not the best for multicam. That's why I'm saying on iPad multicam editing, there is nothing quite like Final Cut Pro for iPad. On the desktop version DaVinci Resolve, this works flawlessly. But on the iPad version, it needs some work. But with Fusion, you can create powerful special effects here. I mean, for example, I can adjust this embers here and create my own particle effects. I mean, the options are practically limitless if you take the time to learn Fusion. It's gonna take a second to render all that, but the point is the tools are here for basically every single thing you need to do. Here's a little sneak peek of the ember effect working on this little clip here. So besides the multicam really having some issues and at least this current version, the Vinci Resolve for iPad, this has basically no downsides for me who does not mind taking the time to learn these more advanced features. And again, LumaFusion's kind of right in the middle here. It's okay with multicam editing, but you have to pay extra for it. We go to our settings here and features, uh, you'll see available for purchase. You can get this creator pass. So pay a monthly or a yearly subscription for it or buy some of these particular modules like the Multicam Studio, which if you even want to try Multicam footage on LumaFusion, you're gonna want to get this for another $20 after the initial 30 to purchase it. And then for another 20, you can get this speed ramping and enhanced keyframing. And then for another 20, you can also get the ability to export LumaFusion projects to Final Cut Pro standard. So you can finish it or do more with it on the desktop version of Final Cut Pro. So it has some neat options, but once you start going past the basics with LumaFusion, you're spending a lot of money on this program. And I don't really think some of those features are worth it. I tried the Multicam Studio. I tried it on the free trial of the creator thing. And honestly, I don't want to pay him any more money. It wasn't great. You can't even cut the footage while you're in the Multicam Studio. You're literally just able to swap between angles. And that's just not how I work. When I first go through my timeline, I'm cutting between the different angles and I'm cutting out all the mistakes or blank periods of time or anything like that. Anything that I need to cut out of the footage, I'm doing that while I'm cutting between angles. 
and you can't do that on Luma Fusion at all. And that's a huge deal breaker for me as far as multicam editing and features in general. It's got some color presets and you can change the brightness and some of the balances here. So it's pretty on par with what Final Cut Pro for iPad gives you, but it is a very surprisingly full featured app that you can get on your iPad and your iPhone. You can even get it on the Android platform. So it's neat that this app exists. Do I think it's the best of the bunch? No. But yeah, I think the most complete iPad app here is honestly Final Cut for iPad. I think it's probably the best iPad video editing app, even with its compromises of no presets and no plugin support and some limited effects. It is probably the best one for most iPad users. But if you want the most possible features on your iPad, then do you have to get DaVinci Resolve? Because guess what? All those features that I showed in DaVinci Resolve, I didn't pay a dime for them. I paid at least $100 towards Final Cut Pro because I paid for my $50 a year subscription twice now. And with LumaFusion, I paid 30 bucks for the initial and then I stopped because I realized if I wanted any more of their features, I'm gonna be giving them basically another $100 too. And it's not quite worth it to me. So that's the reality for literally no cost. You're getting the most features not the best optimized experience for an iPad. You're gonna have to play with the keyboard shortcuts. You're gonna have to deal with certain pages not working well on iPads, all that kind of stuff. But it has the most features for sure. So yeah, if you're just making a quick YouTube short or even a video like mine, LumaFusion will be able to do what you needed to do for the most part. Multicam gets a little bit harder to justify with LumaFusion. That's where I'd probably say move to Final Cut Pro for iPad. It will make your multicam editing so much easier. And with live multicam, if you shoot on iPhones, it's just a clear choice. But if neither of those can quite do what you need to do and you have to work off an iPad, I would look into DaVinci Resolve. You're gonna have to deal with a little bit worse of a multicam experience, but everything else is significantly more feature rich. And with the Blackmagic cloud service, you can have your project synced from your iPad to your desktop and have Blackmagic camera apps on your Android or iPhone and have everything synced to the cloud if you want. And that works phenomenally as well. All these apps can work off of an external drive. That's not an issue here. It used to be for Final Cut for iPad, but that has been solved. Honestly, version two of Final Cut Pro for iPad fixed a lot of issues and made it actually pretty recommendable. But that's the differences here. Those are my recommendations. I'm gonna be using DaVinci Resolve mostly on my desktop, and then when I need to have it somewhere else, I might use it on my iPad, or I might even go back to Final Cut Pro depending on how many updates they keep giving it. They are updating it pretty frequently. Where I don't see Blackmagic putting a lot of effort into DaVinci Resolve for iPad, it's looked kind of the same since the beginning. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below if you do any video editing, what app are you currently using? Would you even try editing on an iPad? Or after watching this video, are you like, man, none of these apps can do what I need to do? Let me know all that down in the comments below. I've heard some rumors that iPadOS 19 is supposedly gonna be offering more Mac-like features I feel like they say this every year, but this one comes from Mark Gurman, which is a much more reliable Apple leaker. It's got like 80 to 90% accuracy. So it's definitely a possibility. And if that's the case, do you think these apps are gonna get more pro? Or do you think these developers are gonna take another year or two to really give the iPad apps it deserves with the powerful chip it already has? If you're curious about the setup I have here at all, it's all gonna be linked in the description down below. If you wanna support this channel or you want a shirt like this, check for the link to my website in the description down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and comment, and of course, subscribe. It really does help this channel out a ton. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great rest of your day.